Whereas That's true. in Chagao, I would say if you go like further to the north, you have to be careful to download like Google Maps or wherever you want to go because there's a wow. very I bad miss this coverage view. of reception. There. Chagao has become the hotspot of the Philippines for young tourists coming in. And I don't understand why Globe or Smart is not working on improving the infrastructure when it comes to internet. What's up Philippines? Welcome back to another reaction video with your host Nelly. I am so happy to see all of your smiling faces. Today's a great day. I hope you are enjoying your little comfort zone right now watching this video with me. Today we are reacting to Bali versus Chagao. Which island is better? And I'm like, when I saw the title, I'm like, ooh, I already know what's going on in the comment section of this video. People are like, you cannot compare. I know we cannot compare. It's two very, very different places in two very different countries. I'm just curious what this girl has to say, so I'm just going to watch it anyway. I hope you join me. Let's do this. Hi, friends. So I'm currently Hi. back in Munich in my hometown, and I'm going to stay here for about a month before I continue traveling. Looks cool. I'm going to update you about my next destinations very soon. As you may be seen in my last videos, I lived in Bali and in Chagao in the last couple of months as a digital mm -hmm. nomad. And I, I did too. And questions about which travel destination is better for digital nomads. So in this video, I mm. want to give you a very necessary like comparison update and I'm going to share my opinions and I try to make it as quick and as straightforward as possible. In this comparison, oh. I'm going to cover what I think are the eight most relevant topics, um, which is cost of living and accommodation in general, internet, um, transportation, Ooh, uh, climate, social community, visa, healthcare, and safety. Okay, first of Ooh, all, accommodation and cost of living. In points. general, I would say Bali is a bit cheaper than the Philippines. And I, I think the reason behind that is that the Philippine pesos is a bit stronger currency than mm -hmm. the Balinese currency. For me, that personally meant, for example, for my yeah. accommodation in the Philippines, which was a room in like a guest house. It was very nice, very big and mm. very personalized in some sense but it still costed like 800 euro per month which is comparably wow. kind of expensive whereas in bali i had a room which i personally didn't like as much but it was still nice i had um, a shared kitchen and stuff like that as well and it only costed around 500 or 450 euros in general this is something that i have to point out accommodations if you compare it with bali and the philippines specifically bali and chagao it's like there are differences for sure and it definitely is cheaper in bali I would say Sorry, in Philippines. Bali, you should calculate if you just have like a room in a guest house around like 500 to 700 euros per month mm -hmm. and in Chagao it can be like 600 maybe if you're lucky up to like over 1000 per month um, yeah. so it is more expensive definitely for accommodation. True. The second most asked question was like internet and reliability Whee! speed of internet and I have to say it obviously depends where you are staying at for example True. in bali my first guest house had like kind of unreliable internet but in general mm -hmm. i would say bali has quite a reliable internet um Very that's true why as it well. is one of the digital nomad hotspots there are a lot of cafes that can provide really stable internet even if your accommodation maybe doesn't have it and i would say it's like in average normal like in europe yeah. as well like it's sometimes a bit slower but in general they have quite a reliable and good internet whereas mm -hmm. in Chagao I would say it is like either very bad or very very good because <laughs> you never know. Um, a lot of restaurants and accommodations already afforded um, Starlink which is a satellite internet and if you have it it's like the most brilliant internet I ever had in my life um, it's very freaking fast and very reliable um, but if you don't have it in Everybody your has it. or in wherever you go for working the internet is quite slow and unreliable but in general there's even a list of a lot of restaurants mm -hmm. and cafes who provide Starlink internet so even if you have an accommodation that is not really wow. providing the best internet you can go to some of the cafes and just work from there or if you're a person who wants to work from a co-working yeah. space there is a co-working space in Chagao as well oh. that provides Starlink internet good so point 
point. Yeah, it's very stable there. Regarding mobile data and the coverage of the mobile network. Let me just stop right here. This is something that is really a bit disappointing in general. Like when I'm back in the Philippines, specifically in Manila, where you have high speed internet, like really, really good internet. You go to cafes and nobody has internet. Like internet is not accessible for guests. If there is internet, it's really bad internet. And I'm like, why are you not improving the situation? Because you know, you could have so many people coming in on a regular basis and consuming coffee and food and whatnot and have regular guests. And it's not a thing in, in Manila. And that is something that Bali does really good in terms of being a digital nomad spot. Wherever you go, there is internet accessible and it's pretty good. And so I agree with her. Work, I would say Starlink it's is good though. at both islands like there are areas that are covered um, less well and better especially of course like the touristy and very crowded areas are working very well for mobile data and despite of the beaches at Bali they are very bad like you sometimes don't have any reception at the beaches mm. whereas That's true. in Chagao I would say you have like mobile data almost like everywhere in the south but if you go like further to the north you have to be careful to download like google maps or wherever you want to go because there's a wow. very I bad miss this coverage view. of reception there climate and environment um well i would say climate i do agree and that is something that i don't understand because Chagao has become the hotspot of the philippines for young tourists coming in especially experts coming in digital nomads and i don't understand why globe or smart is not working on improving the infrastructure when it comes to internet so please if any management people from these companies are watching make it happen please i'll move to Chagao immediately it's probably similarish. It is very hot in the dry seasons and mostly the, it's not raining at that time. So, for example, I stayed in Bali from mid of July until the end of October. And I can't really remember that I really had like a very bad rainy day, honestly. Like it rained maybe for an hour max and very, very little. And then it was like sunshine again. <laughs> so I think I was also a bit lucky because the rainy season starts, I think, in the beginning or middle of October. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't have any I think rain so during that time. Whereas in Chagao, I stayed more already in the beginning of the rainy season. And I think it was similar as if I would have stayed in Bali, but it was starting to rain here and there. There were like um, several times of the day where it was raining and then mm. the sun was out again. So I would say the climate is not necessarily very different in these yeah. two places. But what I would definitely maybe consider mm -hmm. is that Bali is in general more sheltered regarding typhoons or any like heavy tropical storms, whereas Chagao is like more on yes. like the receiving end of that. So they had a very big typhoon um, in two years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And there was like a typhoon warning when I was staying there as well. So it can happen more likely there. And if it happens, yeah. it could also occur that it's more True. strong and actually destroys like your accommodation or something around that. But that's just something you should really look into, um, especially if you want to try. Let's put very extreme. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time, but calamities are a thing in the Philippines. But yeah, in terms of rainy season, the biggest mistake that tourists make is not go to a place because it's rainy season. Let me just tell you, I lived in tropical countries for like eight to nine years. One was in Miami, then Philippines, then Bali. And I have the comparisons. I know that when it rains, it pours but it just lasts for like one hour and then sun comes out and it's all good and then eventually during the day it rains again so it's like not all rainy and just cloudy and dark just wanted to put that out there travel there during the rainy season Regarding environment, I would say both of them have so much cool stuff, um, outside activities that you can do. Obviously, Bali is a bigger island and there are like different spots where you can go mm -hmm. to, more waterfalls, more uh, mountains sure. where you can also climb and a lot more like different spots, whereas Chagao is like a little island and you can go from A to B very quickly. Um, there's a lot to do there as well, but there are definitely no mountains to climb at. And um, I think yeah. most activities in Chagao surround like water, like surfing, 
diving, free diving. Um, also, like, I think rafting was one of the yeah. things you can also do, which I didn't do. So this is like more water activity based. Whereas in Bali, it is a bit more difficult to combine all of the activities. Like if you're staying, for example, in Changu, you're not really able to dive there. You have to go to the other side of the island, which is like four hours away and dive there so it is not as easy to yeah. switch um with all of it's the fall. activities if you're interested in multiple activities such as me visa and duration of stay so basically i can only talk for myself i have a german passport. i agree so that's why i said like comparing those two islands is kind of like tricky because they are just very different right bali is a huge island versus shagao is literally just like you know everybody on the island when you spend a few months there so just getting from one point to the another point of the island takes max one and a half hours i would say it's very different but i love it it's like the real island life it's a paradise island no mountains well there are mountains but not big ones but yeah so lots so to do nevertheless i can only talk from this point of view as i don't know how it is for any other nationalities but for the whole european passport holders it's pretty much the same basically for both countries you don't have to apply for any visa beforehand you can just travel there you get a visa on mm -hmm. arrival which is a visa for one month 30 days and if you want to stay longer you can extend your visa the difference is between like how to extend your visa. Basically, in the Philippines, it was very easy. It was a page and you can just extend it via visa waiver program. And it was basically very simple, a thing of five minutes. Whereas in Bali, there are two different ways of how you can extend your visa. Um, you can do it online, mm. but you can only extend your visa online if you already applied online for the first visa. So if you already know um, before you travel to Bali that you're going to stay longer than a month, I would very highly recommend to apply for the visa online beforehand because then you can extend it online and that's also very very easy but if you do it like i did at the first time which is basically just travel there and get a visa at the airport figure arrival, out your visas then you can only extend it at the immigration office in Denpasa. And that is honestly kind of a hassle. I did it um, the two times I had to do it over an agency, a visa agency, because else you have to go back and forth to the immigration office <laughs> like three times in total for visa one visa things. extension. And it's quite a far distance and it's just like not worth the time. And uh, That's not true because if you pay a visa agent, uh, official visa agencies here to do it for you, you only have to go once. So there's a little life hack with Nelly. Effort. so basically i only had to go there in person once to give them like a photo and like my fingerprints and stuff like that so basically that's how you can do it if you want to stay longer after the two months um in bali mm. i just traveled for a couple of days to singapore came back and got a new visa in bali there is another option where you can apply for a longer visa for three months it is much more expensive called visa um, run but there's definitely like the possibility to get like a visa for three months and then you can extend it for another three months so you can definitely stay there for a longer amount of time regarding the cost of the visa the visa on arrival in the philippines was for free and the extension yeah. costs around i can if you have any questions regarding visa i can leave a contact for bali in the description box down below and i also can highly highly recommend my visa agency that i had in the philippines who sorted out a visa for me so yeah it's done day 50 euros in bali on the other hand um the first visa costs around 30 euros or 35 euros um the visa on arrival is not for free it's around 30 dollars 35 dollars regarding on like the fluctuation of the currency at the moment and the extension is the same price but oh, yeah. if you sorry. want to do it over an agency sorry 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 it's free for the philippines 35 dollars uh, in Bali. currency at the moment and the extension is the same price but if you want to do it over an agency as i did to make it easier for you it costs obviously a bit more so it was around 50 euros regarding transportation mm. i would say in both destinations it is like very much handy if you drive a scooter um especially yep. in Chagao, it is Agreed. i would say even necessary in bali you have still yeah. 
grab and go check which is like the scooter drivers that can drive you somewhere but in general i would say scooters are much more cheap in bali than they are in the philippines in bali i sure. pay around 80 euros for renting my scooter for a month or it was like 79 or 75 something around that same whereas yeah. in the philippines i paid around 150 euros per month for renting yeah. a scooter so pretty Ka-ching. much the double price Gone. and the scooter in Bali was much better than the scooter I had in the Philippines. So I also got like one of the cheapest possible scooters in the Philippines. And it was like still very expensive in my opinion. Yeah. Regarding getting like cabs and taxis and stuff like that. In the Philippines and Chagao, there are a lot of tuk-tuks which drive around. Which Tricycle. can also help you to transport like suitcases and stuff like that. But I haven't really figured out how to get them. Like basically... Each time I just, just wanted them, I just up hand. stood at the street and just waved. Um, maybe I just haven't figured it out. Or you just ask somebody. Ask a local, they always know somebody. Not yet. If you have been in Chagao and figured out a better way to call a tuk-tuk, you can just write it in the captions down below. But basically, I think it was more of a like see and wave kind of system um whereas mm. in bali it was much more handy because you can order a grab or a go check which yeah, are like the scooter app. drivers or also taxi drivers and you can order them for a specific time or just like right at the moment and then they would come and pick you up so that was like much more handy to be very honest regarding safety i would say like channel yeah there are transportation services in the philippines as well but they are mostly common in the big cities like Cebu. Manila and Iloilo. So I remember I was with, I think, Move It or something like that. But it's not that established in, in the islands or in the provinces. In most parts of Asia, I feel very, very safe, um, even safer than in Europe. So I Same. didn't have like major issues in Same. either of them. I felt very safe also as a woman walking around at night, um, just going to bars and clubs like an hardly ever had any issue. The only thing that happened in Chagao, which never really happened in Bali, was that I, for example, left my helmet out at my scooter and my helmet was stolen. And I did it quite regularly in Bali. Okay, this happens in Bali all the time. I just wanted to put it out there. If you live in Bali, you just know never to put your helmet out because it's just gone. People just steal helmets. I don't know why. As well, and I've been in Bali much longer amount of time than I was in Chagao and it never happened. Also, a friend of mine left like his very cheap sunglasses like in the side of the scooter and they were also gone. So I think stealing is maybe a bigger issue like in Chagao but in general I felt very very safe as a woman out and about and just in general. Regarding healthcare I would say it's very similar as well. Yeah I lived in Chagao for three months. There was one issue I have to say that was during the pandemic which I made public but yeah other than that I never had issues. No stealing, never felt unsafe or anything so yeah and just in general. Regarding healthcare, I would say it's very similar as well. There are like little medical centers where you can go to if you have issues. So for example, in Bali, I had a lot of infected wounds wow. and stuff like that. And I also had like one fire coral wound in um, Chagao, which was very heavy. And you maybe seen it like in some of my videos where I had like a patch on the side. So I had to go f- to a medical center in Chagao as well. At both medical centers in Bali and in Chagao, I felt quite well. I felt like the staff was well prepared for like my issues and they helped me very good. Um, in general, it's like a different medical healthcare mm-hmm. system than in Europe, obviously. So they would, for example, use much more antibiotica than I would like to take because like it's... It's like a different way of how treating to treat stuff, but yeah. all in all, it was a very good experience. And the last point is social community. Uh, the healthcare thing is very important to mention because in Chagao, the infrastructure when it comes to hospitals is not that good. So I hope there is improvement in the future and I think they're building a hospital. So that will be improved. Yeah, in Bali, there are several like local medical centers and then you have a big hospital as well. You just feel a little bit safer in terms of like where you get your medical supply if something happens communities and i would say in both destinations you have uh, quite big social communities where you can join very easily and find like-minded people but in my opinion 
like the social or like the whole community in Chagao differs quite a bit from like the Changu Bali kind of community. It obviously depends where yeah. you're saying in Bali, but I'm talking more about like the Changu area. So basically, I personally preferred um, the whole Chagao community. Mm. It was very like personal. It was very authentic. There were a Cute. lot of people who were like very down to earth. Also, like like to do outdoorsy stuff or like um, surf diving very like kind open and just genuinely interested in meeting you whereas in Bali I had the feeling it was more like business concentrated so a lot of people would like to yeah like find somebody to collaborate with or for the next business opportunity. A lot of people have startups there or try to get some momentum like in social media, for yeah. example. So it is quite a bit of an influencer kind of style of people in Bali, whereas in Chagao it's more like the down-to-earth, authentic kind of people and just a very like Interesting. nice community. Like everybody knows everybody and everybody is welcome kind of style. Yeah. So that was my experience in both places. There are <laughs> um, digital nomad meetups. There are several events. There are sport um, stuff which you can join. Um, in Chagao, it's obviously much smaller. So there's, for example, a digital nomad mm. dinner or lunch each Thursday. And it's really cool. We always were a group of like 15 to 20 people max. Whereas in Bali, there are multiple different yeah, like true. events, so many events, stuff like that. So Hard to keep it up. is not only one, but you can choose from a lot of them. And sometimes there are a lot of people joining and sometimes there are just a few. So it really depends on how well the event is received. Mm. So yeah, that's it. That's okay. my comparison between Chagao and Bali. I hope it helped you. If you have any questions about any other topic you would like to know about, um, just ask me a question. I try to answer them as good as possible. And if I had to choose between Chagao and Bali, I would probably choose Chagao. Wow, um, she like chose Chagao! <laughs> honest, because it was still much smaller, much more authentic. Yeah. Uh, like nicer community in my opinion and you can do different activities but still live at the same spot so you don't have to travel across the whole island and I also like the nature a bit better that's um, true it is pretty much the same Prettier. nature but it's still much more like natural and rural in Chagao so I hope it helped you and <laughs> I'll see you in my next video next week all Bye. right thank you well okay that was a very very german way to compare places uh, very thorough very detailed very analytical very objective as well like you can tell she was just like talking from like a perspective of like this was very practical i like this and it's like you know emotions are just a little bit in the back so i lived in both places and i love both places and as i said it's really hard to compare because both islands are just very very different i personally would love to move to Chagao but I am missing a few things that are very essential for me and those essential things are for example just the infrastructure in terms of hospital I live by myself so whenever something happens to me I have to make sure that I can drag myself to the hospital or at least call the ambulance to pick me up other than that Chagao Island is a paradise like a true paradise it is so stunning it has the most amazing nature I have so many friends there the community today is very very tight everybody's like she said very genuine very authentic down to earth it's all about the community aspect everybody's kind of like on the same level so there's no like crazy like you know that, that business attitude or whatever but nevertheless you know you do have in Bali as well a lot of benefits like she mentioned price wise it's much cheaper it's if you want to be a digital nomad there's just like the infrastructure is kind of better but if it comes to living somewhere without a doubt I would to Chagall like this. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know what your thoughts are. Have you been to both of them? Have you lived in both of them? Write down in the comment section what you experienced and also check out my other channel Nelly's Life where I share my solo travels as a female and my life in Asia and I'll see you guys next time here on What's Up Philippines!